Well, hello boys and girls and welcome once again to Kingdom Kids. It's great to have you with us. I really hope you're enjoying all that you're learning about the prophets. And we're going to meet another new prophet that Edgar's going to help introduce in just a moment. But I wonder how well you're remembering the memory verse over these last lot of weeks. And I wonder, have you been sending in, you remember to send in uh, pictures of crafts and things like that that you've done. We love getting to see them. So boys and girls, we're going to take an opportunity to pray together as we remember. And so I'm going to remember, I remind you all, if you remember me coming into school, and we did some way of praying. We started with our hands out here and went, oh, oh, oh. And then we, and our hands come down past our eyes, our eyes close, and then our heads bow. And I say, dear Lord, we thank you for kingdom kids. We thank you for all the fun that it brings and for learning about you. Continue to keep us safe during these times. Lord, we pray that you would bless the boys and girls who have returned back to school and the parents and the teachers and the grandparents who are helping out. Father, we thank you that you love us so much. Bless us this day and help us to learn much about you. In your holy name. Amen. So, Hello everyone. Good to see you. You missed last week, didn't you? Yep. You decided he was going to take a week off. Wouldn't say anything. Sure you wouldn't. No. But this week we've got a lot to say. Look at um, our table. We have got lots of, lots of stuff to help us tell the story today. Who are we going to look at today? We're going to look at a prophet called Jeremiah. I wonder do you know anything about Jeremiah? Not much, uh, Edgar says. I'm guessing uh, some of you know maybe a bit about Jeremiah, but lots you don't know. Here's a few questions. Uh, Jeremiah, is it the shortest book in the Bible or the longest book in the Bible? It's the longest book in the Bible. Um, let me see. Was Jeremiah called when he was 16 years old? Was he called to, to be a prophet and speak for God when he was 16? Or was he called before he was even born? We're told that Jeremiah was called by God to be a prophet even before he was born. God had chosen him. Um, did Jeremiah always tell good news? Or did Jeremiah usually tell bad news? What do you think? Good news or bad news? Bad news. So much of what Jeremiah had to tell was bad news. And how Jeremiah told these messages and how God told them to Jeremiah was usually through stories and illustrations. So one of the first ones, God says, take a saucepan and tilt the saucepan away from the north. So find out where north is and then tilt the saucepan away from that direction. And this is what's going to happen. For the people of God, for Israel, for the nation of people, um, God is going to pour out real trouble and problem from the north. Country in the north is going to come and pour out lots of trouble on the land. Let's see, what have we got here? Let's, let's see some of these messages. Let's start with, what have we got here? A belt. In Jeremiah 13, God tells Jeremiah to buy a belt and to wear it. So he goes to buy the belt, agrees the price and pays for it. But God tells him he is not to treat it in any way to make it last. Jeremiah wears the belt and a few days later, God tells him to go to Perath to hide it in some rocks. So Jeremiah does just as he is asked by God. Shortly after that, God asked Jeremiah to return and find the belt again. When he finds it, it is ruined, completely useless. God says it is just like following other gods rather than him. It is useless and doesn't hold the people together. So God said to Jeremiah, people are like a useless belt if they follow after other gods. If they don't follow me but follow after other gods, they're like a belt that won't hold up your treasures. They're useless. 
Okay, let's see what else we've got here. We've got the saucepan, we've got the belts. What have we got? We've got a pottery jar. You ever see one of these made? You know how they made them in the pottery? Well, Jeremiah was sent to visit a potter one day. Have you ever tried making some pottery? I remember trying to do it when I was at school and I was really terrible. You know the way the potter makes the pot? He has the clay spinning around on the wheel and then he uses his hands to shape it into the shape that he wants. Well, Jeremiah was told by the Lord, go down to the potter's house and I'll give you my message. And as he was watching the potter making a pot on the wheel, the clay that he was using was marred in his hands. It all got out of shape. And so he squashed that lump of clay and he started again, made a new pot. God was saying to Jeremiah that the people were like clay in God's hands. And if they went wrong, he could reshape them. He could even squash them. It was a tough message that Jeremiah had to give, but encouraging in a way also. God's the potter. We're the clay. Not very pleasant messages really difficult messages for Jeremiah to share. We've got another clay jar here, nice shape, beautiful clay jar. Here's another story about a jar. In Jeremiah 19, God tells Jeremiah to go and buy a clay pot. He goes to a potter to buy it. Once they agree the price and Jeremiah has the pot, he is to go to Ben Hinnom, a valley, to talk with some of the elders of the people. When he gets to them, he has to tell them that God is going to bring disaster here because the people have forsaken him and worshipped other gods and have done horrible things. They must beware. Then God told Jeremiah to smash the pot. <laughs> this is how God is going to punish his people, for they have not listened to his words. Looked like fun smashing that jar, didn't it? But smashing the people was going to be anything but fun. It was going to be terrible disaster. People being killed, nations and cities and towns being been uh, overturned, it was going to be terrible because the people wouldn't listen. We've got two baskets of fruit. We've got uh, tomatoes in one and, and kiwi in another, but um, that's not the fruit we're going to hear about now. God speaks about two baskets of... This part is about figs, you know, the fruit. Here's an actual fig tree. At the minute, because it's only the beginning of spring, there's no leaves on it yet and not much fruit. But Jeremiah saw two baskets of figs. One basket was really, really good figs, so tasty. The other were bad figs, so bad that you couldn't eat them at all. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying that the exiles from Judah were like the good figs in their lovely basket. But the people left behind with King Zedekiah were like bad figs and God was going to destroy them from the land. Good figs, bad figs. That was the picture that Jeremiah was given of these groups of people. I couldn't bring a field into our table, but we're going to think about a field. You maybe can see the garden outside. Jeremiah was sent to buy a field. Here's the contract for signing to buy the field. Let's see that story. In Jeremiah 32, God tells Jeremiah to buy his uncle's field at Anathoth. Even though the city was being attacked by the Babylonians and about to be taken over, Jeremiah buys the field which was his right to do, and just as God had asked him. He gave the deed of the land to Barak and told Barak that God says to put the deed in a clay jar. Because houses and fields and vineyards will once again be bought in this land. So Jeremiah prayed. God said, 
after the city is taken, I will ensure that this land will be Israel's once more. So finally, we have some good news. After all the terrible news that Jeremiah had to tell the people about the disaster and the, the destruction, he was now able to say, I bought a field because I know that in the future there's going to be hope. There's going to be life here again. There's going to be people here again. We're going to be able to, to live here again. And we've got some good news to share. Isn't that good? Finally, some good news. Most of what Jeremiah ever had to tell the people was bad news. It was about judgment and punishment. Do you think that people like to hear that? No, they certainly did not. And we've got a book here that um, this is going to be another story, not a book like we know. Let's see what kind of book God used. This story is about a scroll. You know what a scroll is, right? like a book, except instead of turning the pages, you open it up on these big long rods and you read from it like this here. Well, Jeremiah produced a scroll where he wrote down all the words that God had spoken about the people of Judah, God's people. And he did that so that they would be able to hear God's word and then turn back to God and repent. But guess what? When that book, that scroll got read to the king, Jehoiakim, Every time a part of it got read, the king chopped it off with a knife and threw it in the fire. Imagine if you handed your copybook in to your teacher to mark your homework and she ripped out page by page and threw it in the fire. It showed that that king had no care and no love for God's message. But yet Jeremiah's words stood because he wrote them all down again and they still stand. To this day. So we haven't made our scroll yet. Um, Jean's going to show you how to make a scroll in a minute and you're going to be able to do that and put some uh, memory verse in it. Um, but um, on this scroll, this book that Jeremiah's words were written on, do you know what the king did? He tore it up and he burned it. He didn't want to hear the words of God. They wouldn't listen to God. And in fact, you know what happened to Jeremiah? Jeremiah was often hated and he was often in trouble. He was thrown into prison at one stage. He was um, thrown into a well and left there in a, a well that had no water in it. He was left there like a jail cell for a while. He was attacked and he was threatened. They tried to kill him. Jeremiah had a really, really difficult time doing what God asked him to do. He was sometimes called the weeping prophet. You know what it is to weep, to cry? Because Jeremiah found his message and his time so sad and difficult that he cried often when he had to tell these terrible messages. And he cried about what was happening. Because sometimes when God has to speak to people about sin, it's really unpleasant and really difficult. And people would rather sometimes just not listen and pretend it's not real. But of course, God's word whether it's bad or good, is always really, really important. Because if you just ignore it or you don't listen to it, it's just going to get you into more and more trouble. And that's what happens in the book of Jeremiah. So one of the things we're going to think about now as you make your scrolls and as you um, put your memory verse in it, Jean's going to show you a new memory verse, uh, is about how God actually can bring life even his words, difficult to listen to and really difficult to say, sometimes really painful when we have to listen to bad news that God brings us sometimes. But if that word is taken into our hearts and lives, it can change us and it becomes like water that quenches our thirst and helps us to feel alive and fresh again. So Jane's going to tell us a bit more about that and show us how to make our scroll. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about Jeremiah, the weeping prophet who was called before he was even born to share the news. And the news was often bad and difficult and he was hated because he told the people what God had to say because the people didn't want to listen. I hope we always want to hear what God says. I hope we always want to listen to what God says because as we listen and hear and obey, that's where we find life. 
So here's what we're going to be attempting to make today. Now I've just added this for decoration. I'll explain to you later what you can do with yours. This is called a scroll and you open it out to read in Bible days. And there's still loads of them around today. So I'll show you now what you need to make a scroll. Now to make our craft today, boys and girls, if you have any old wallpaper is good. Uh, or if you don't have wallpaper, you can use ordinary A4 white paper or color paper, masking tape, a pen, scissors, some markers or crayons, whichever you prefer, toilet roll holders, and we need some stickies, uh, whatever you have, and some beads, and some colored string would be good as well. But if you don't have them, you can just use cord or wool, whichever you have about the place. Okay, so run along, get all them, and come back to me. Now I just want to say before we start, boys and girls, if mum or dad has cling film or tin foil and the centre piece is finished, always keep one or two in the house because they're brilliant for craft ideas and you never know when we might be needing them. We could actually do with them today but we don't have two so what I'm going to use is toilet roll holders and we're going to join them together just ever, just slightly overlapping and when you have that when you have that done, get your masking tape and put a round of masking tape round each seam to keep them together. So when you have, now if you're using four to make a narrow one, a narrow scroll, that's okay, but I'm actually going to be making a slightly wider scroll, so I'm putting making two of these and okay, presto, I have part of my scroll. So do you want to do the same now with toilet roll holders and come back to me when you have two of these. This is the one I done earlier actually just for speed six. So we need two of these and we need them the same size. Okay, so come back to me when you have that done. Okay, so we have our two done. The next thing we're going to do is color the outside here of the scroll. You can use any color you want. I'm going to use maybe a red and just in about an inch or so. If you just want to color it in roughly, you can do different colors or you can do all the one color and just make it look. I'm going to fill that in and you come back to me when you have yours ready. Okay, so that's mine done now. Now we next, the next thing we need to do is put the paper on the scroll. Now, years ago in the Bible, they didn't write in paper and books like we do. They wrote on a scroll. So this is what we're going to put on now is the paper for the scroll. So we need a bit of the edge here where you hold the scroll and the same on this side. So roughly we're going to probably cut about here. So we need it to go down, we'll take it down a good bit, we'll mark it. I'm going to cut this out and show you roughly and then you can, if you're using just ordinary paper, I'll show you as well how to do that. Okay, I'm going to cut this out and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm using wallpaper, but as I said at the beginning, maybe you're just using ordinary A4 paper. So you will need two sheets together for the scroll we're making. So again, just get your two sheets together and tape them. Okay, boys and girls, so we have our two sheets together, right? You are not to write on the sides because that's the piece of the paper that we're going to attach to the scroll. Now make sure the bit with the masking tape is on the outside. You don't want to write on top of that. So this is the inside with no masking tape. That's where you're going to write. Okay, what are we going to write? Well, have we done our memory verse this today yet? I don't think the memory verse has been mentioned today yet, but here it is, and that's what we're going to write. It's, it's quite a long one, actually. It's John 4, verse 14. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up 
to eternal life. What does that mean? That's a long one, isn't it? Now, you or me, when we're thirsty, we go and we get a drink of water at the tap, and that quenches our thirst. But when you become a Christian, you want to know more and more about Jesus. And the only way you're going to get to know more and more about Jesus, it's like a thirst for Jesus, is by spending time talking to Jesus. Remember we've done the prayer box? Praying to Jesus and by reading his word, reading the Bible. So the more we do that, the more the thirst for spending time with Jesus will be quenched. But then it wells up inside us like a spring and then we're able to share it with other people that we come into contact with. That's what our memory verse means. So let's do it one more time and then we're going to pause the video and you can write it out on your piece of paper that we've prepared already. So it's John 4, 14. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Okay, come back to me when you've that written on your paper and then we're going to finish your scrolls after that. Okay, boys and girls, so I'm going to finish here with the, with the wallpaper one that I would started. You can use the other paper as we said, but I'm going to show you now the next bit. Put your scroll that you prepared with the toilet roll, your scroll sides, put that at the side of your paper and make sure that it covers, make sure that the marker is visible at both sides, as much of it is covered up and use your masking tape to seal it the whole way down and that will keep it in place. Now you may need to do a bit maybe lengthways along the top as well. So you do that with both your sides and come back to me. So when you have both sides attached to the paper for the writing, you roll it up tight, coming in from both sides, oops, and you should meet roughly in the middle. And then when you go to read your scroll, you open it out and you read what is written inside. John 4, 14, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now you can go around your family reading your scroll. If you want to decorate it some more with some of the beads or some string, you can attach them around the end pieces of the scroll and just put a bow on it or maybe a bead, whatever you prefer. Have fun and be creative. And remember now that especially we're living in times when the shop, some of the shops aren't open, let's see what you can use around the house.